Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. Um, you know, this might be one of my shortest videos ever. and um, But it serves a purpose. A lot of the reads now are coming with this uh, heavy print on the back. And um, it's like pressed into the wood. The Van Doren's the same thing. It's pressed into the wood. Uh, I just noticed the Rigatis, no. The Rigatis are absolutely smooth across the back. So I think they're just ink printing on here like they used to years ago. Um, this is an impression that's pressed into the wood. And um, this is an impression that's pressed into the wood. Now, the problem with this is, is that when you're getting the new reads out of the package, that sometimes there's some raising uh, above the read line. So then what happens is you take your mouthpiece, and if you have a good mouthpiece with a very flat table like this one is, um, that when you put the read on, well, it's not flat because it's sitting on those letters. Um, if you get a manufactured piece like this Van Doren, which is still a very good mouthpiece, um, you know, this is not going to be, in general, exactly the same kind of flatness like a handmade piece. You know, the, the flatness of a handmade piece is, depending on who makes it, of course, you know, um... You know, this is uh, Phil Tone, made by Phil Engelman. And, um, you know, he's uh, a master at what he does. And his tables are dead flat, you know. Um, the Van Dorn is going to be, okay, a little bit, it's machine cut. They're quite good. I mean, uh, you know, they're quite flat. But it's not the same as when you have somebody who uh, really goes painstakingly making sure that it's, it's dead absolutely flat. Now, some mouthpieces are not flat anyway, especially the auto links. They, a lot of them have a slight um, concavity to them, so they're more forgiving with stuff like this. And um, But the point is, is that if the letters are sticking out on top of it, your reed is not sitting flat on the mouthpiece. So you have to decide what you're going to do. You can take a very, very, very fine sandpaper, like a 1,000 grade, lay the reed on it, and just rub it back and forth a little bit. Um, some people use uh, like a reed geek type thing, and they scrape over it. Um, me, personally, uh, I use a flat blade from a knife. Now, the problem with the knife is, you know, there's many places you can't bring the knife. Uh, like on the airplane, you can't bring the knife to school. Um, there's certain other places like a government building. Um, you might get searched if you're going to play a gig in a government building. And they might say, oh, you can't go in there with that knife or, you know, something else. So I just use it at home, you know. And um, it depends. You know, sometimes if I'm in the uh, situation, it doesn't matter. You know, but it's in in my case too. So you have to decide what works for you. But the idea is that you don't want to really be taking much wood off. You just want to just ever so slightly just follow it down, scrape it ever so slightly. You're going to take a little bit of dust off so that the table is flat. I'm not a big fan of using the sandpaper, and I'll tell you why. Because not only are you sanding this, you're also now sanding all this. I don't want to sand all this. I just all I want to do is just take these letters down so that they're they're flat, you know. The Reed Geek. Um, I don't own one. I know, but um, or something like that. You know, that's in it. Now Joe Allard years ago, um, he used to rub the reed on a piece of paper, like a uh, typewriter paper, and um in a circle and that would you know close it down but you know the problem with that is it's really that's not really good enough to get this lettering cut down so you really kind of need to use some type of a blade or a tool 
to um to work that and get that so it seals on your mouthpiece you know like here i have it on my mouthpiece i didn't wet this by the way this is dry but okay so this one really is not even sealing nothing let's do this one i gotta go check that readout some more there you go this one seals good and this one doesn't seal at all you know i don't know about this one this is what i'm saying i'm not really wetting these too much either these are kind of dry but well that has pretty good suction to it this one and the rigatti well i want to try the rigatti i don't i want i use it on this mouthpiece so this rigatti is very slightly heavier than the other reeds so um this is one I use on my little bit closer mouthpiece. Yeah, this has good suction. So I have one reed that does not have good suction. And I'll have to spend a little time figuring. It's probably due to the lettering. Um, it's not. But uh, I don't want to do it here on the video because I really want to just check it out carefully and make sure. But I'm sure that's what it is. It's the lettering is raised. And until I get over this lettering, it's not going to seal. Um, okay, so anyway, that was my topic for today. Talk about these reeds and getting them to close on your mouthpiece and, and all that kind of stuff and the lettering and uh, using some kind of a something to, you know, uh, uh, help you out with that. All right, have a good Sunday and uh, we'll talk.